I am going to uh, show you today a little bit about poultices and plasters. So herbal poultices, herbal plasters, how we apply them, how we create them. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about compresses as well, and I'll have some demonstration of different types of herbs, different uh, consistencies of herbs, different materials, different solutions that we use for these. So this is all about the mechanics of a poultice or a plaster primarily. Okay, so let's just start with our equipment list here. What are we actually using? Uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff that, I'm, that we're looking at in front of me. And let's start first of all with, this, with uh, the solution that we're going to use. In other words, the liquid that we're going to use to actually combine with an herb to turn it into a poultice or plaster. So we have over here on the left, we have apple cider vinegar. We have a tincture, a chaparral is, is this particular tincture. It could be in, you know, in whatever form. This is the form that we use, that we hold them in in our... In our um, uh, first aid kits and our herbal first aid kits for the field, uh, Nalgene, HTPE, uh, BPA uh, free, glass of course, tinctures is the way that most people are used to seeing them, castor oil for certain types of injuries, we have honey here, we also have down here, I have a prickly pear uh, um, itself, the cactus pad, I'm going to open that up in just a second, I'll take that off, of the, I'll do that off, off camera just to save time and show you the, the inside goop of this, it's very similar to aloe vera, uh, we could use aloe vera gel or aloe vera juice, and then most importantly over here we have nice clean filtered or distilled water. So we're going to use all of those different, uh, different, we're not going to use all of them in one video, I just wanted to show you that is the scope uh, and many more of different types of fluid that we can use to mix in with different forms of herbs. What else do we have? Well, we have the herbs themselves, so we're looking at some different herbs in different forms. We have a whole herb itself that's dried, that's an Artemisia species here, uh, that's just dried sitting here. We have powdered herb itself, okay? We have uh, cut and sifted uh, the leaf here, it's, uh, you know, as such. It could be leaf or root, uh, cut and sifted in that form, but all of these are dried. Uh, this is dried as well. We have juniper berry that's dried. That could be fresh. Uh, if it wanted to be, but that's that's our juniper berry. We have oregano that's fresh. We have yarrow here that's fresh. We have lantana that's fresh. And this is not the form I would use. I would I would use uh, the leaves here a little. It's been, we've had a lot of cold weather, and so the leaves here are not um, the, in the form of um, uh, uh, freshness that I would like to use them if for lantana specifically. But I just wanted to show you that with a flower. We've got some Biden's pelosa, which would be which is a good one as well to use for certain types of injuries. We have elder, uh, elder uh, tree uh, leaf as well. All of these here are usable, are useful, and we'll, we'll talk through some of the different ways we'll do it, and then we'll actually make poultice and, and, and or plaster. I'll discuss the difference between them and how we would do that. Let's look at our actual equipment we'll use as well, like the, you know, what are we gonna do? make a poultice out of? And we see that we need some basic first aid stuff. So we have, for instance, um, you know, some uh, silk medical tape here. Uh, we have some uh, athletic tape. We have K tape, kinesiology tape. Uh, sometimes that's useful for things like the ribs, especially, and putting a poultice on the rib. We have uh, um, ace wrap or any kind of a, uh, a wrap like this. We could certainly use this type of wrap or a self adhesive uh, wrap is fine too. Uh, the nice thing about ace wrap is that you can wash it and reuse it because it gets things get kind of messy when you make poultices. We have four by four gauze. It could be two by two or th or, or three by three or whatever size. We have Curlix to make our own size gauze if we wanted to do that. So this is our Curlix dressing, right? We have just regular old band-aids, uh, you know, that, we, that we're going to do. We'll talk a little bit about surface area and how important it is to have a maximum surface area. But we could do something like this for a real small uh, type of, of wound that we were using, that we were working with, okay? All of those are things. Um, we also have, I just wanted to show you in reference to an herbal first aid kit, you know. This is my travel kit that I, t that I carry a lot for my own personal stuff. It's nice. It's real compact. I've got herbal stuff going on, I've got regular first aid stuff going on here, but the things that are in here, so charcoal, we can talk about, we'll talk about charcoal uh, plasters as well a little bit uh, today in this class, and we'll um, discuss how we could use that. We've got a little bit of salve down in here, we, we could actually use, uh, we could actually mix in herbs with a salve as a poultice as well, as a sort of oil based type of poultice. We have, uh, you know, just basic old uh, wound wash that would give us our fluid if we needed to. We've got tinctures that we can make tincture poultices out of. We have, uh, you know, there's a SAM splint, so we could actually do a poultice underneath a SAM splint for, in, you know, something, a situation where we had, uh, um, where we had, uh, a broken bone or a fracture in the field, and we were in the field indefinitely, and we needed to help the, help the, the bone heal as well. So these are all the things we've got to work with here. Okay, so I went ahead and made a quick uh, um, scraping of the prickly pear pad, so that gives us some fluid. As you look at this, this is really very, very wet. We've got a lot of water uh, content in that, and normally if I was going to mix 
it up, mix a poultice up with this, I would have probably put it all into a bowl or some sort of a glass container uh, or a stainless steel container to be able to mix with and make it a little easier. So we can certainly do that. For the demonstration of the, of the video, I'm just going to use water because it's easier to work with and, and show what's going on with the mix than it is with other things. But just know that we can use these for different, these different uh, solutions for different uses. And I'll talk briefly about that. I'm going to stay away a lot from uh, what we're using specifically in terms of like what we're using for herbs and why we're using a specific herb or why we're using a specific solution like honey or vinegar or castor oil or just a tincture poultice or whatever we're doing. I'm going to stay away from that other than just mentioning, you know, you'll probably hear it in, in you know, kind of as a side uh, mention of what we'd be doing because really, again, this is a video, I want this to be a video about the mechanics of making and applying a poultice or a plaster or a compress. I don't want it to be where we get off on a tangent about all the reasons we'd use prickly pear. And they are legion. I mean, the amount of uses for prickly pear cactus as a poultice uh, a solution are incredible. There's a, there's a huge list of things we do. Or the reason that we would use honey versus vinegar versus water. Uh, and some of it just may be availability. But we could go for literally for hours, I'm not exaggerating, for hours on just those subjects alone. But again, this is a, this is a video about how to, we actually mechanically of how we put it together. So first things first, make sure your hands are clean, make sure every your surfaces are clean. We're not, this is not a sterile working environment. Don't assume it's ever going to be with herbs. We, we might be harvesting herbs out fresh. We've got all kinds of different constituents and and the, the, uh, the you know, probably bacteria and fungi and, 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 and molds and uh, all the things that are, that are going to be on any plant that you harvest in the wild. They're going to be there. That's what's there. You can rinse off the plant in, in cold water just, just briefly, a little bit if you need to, if it looks like it's dirty. But if you're harvesting in a nice, wild, fairly pristine environment, and the herb is you know up above the ground it's you know it's not something that looks like it, it's it's dirty in the first place or that it could have gotten dirty or, or animal urine or anything like that on it then uh then you're good to go that's fine this is i've done this for like i said you know for at least two decades more three decades of doing things in the field and i'm telling you this this these herbs work just absolutely fine fresh in the field without having to go and try to sterilize them none of these surfaces are going to be sterile and uh, they're not meant to be but they are meant to be clean they do need to be clean Okay, depending on what we're using the uh, the poultice for, of course, uh, they, they may we need to really be careful to make sure our hands and everything is clean. For instance, if we're working with an open wound, uh, but uh, that that aside, uh, we we're not expecting sterility here, but we are expecting cleanliness. So uh, the other thing is we're going to kind of go through how we will prepare the herb depending on what it is. So if it's a fresh herb like this, like yarrow or oregano or elder uh, uh, leaf, then we're going to have to chop, we're going to have to macerate that herb up, we're going to have to take it and chop it up as finely as we can, especially in the field, you know, we're going to have to try to get it as finely chopped as we can, right? That's what we do with our fresh herb. If it's something like a berry, like a juniper berry, we're going to probably want to crush those just to at least open them up. We don't have to, we don't have to take them and turn them, and turn, turn them into powder or anything like that, although that'd be nice, but we just need to at least crush the berries and, and open them. Powder is nice because, of course, we have the maximum surface area exposed with that powder, right? Uh, cut and sift it is fine, though, too. If that's what we've got, that's what we've got, and it's fine. Um, let's, let's, from there, let's just talk quickly about definition of, of, of some of these terms we're using. So a poultice, the way I define a poultice specifically, is I define a poultice as being a, uh, an herb that is separated uh, between the, the skin and the herb by some sort of medium you know, some sort of absorptive medium like, like, a, like a, a sterile or whatever, just a very clean, uh, if nothing else, a gauze would work, right? Uh, this could be even something like a cravat if we had to. Uh, but whatever it is, th th there's a separation between the skin and the herb, okay? So think of a, a poultice to me, I think of this in terms of like a comparison would be a tea bag. So if you had like a tea in a tea bag and you just took that tea bag and put that on the skin, that would be a poultice. Versus a plaster, to me, is, is where I take the actual herb itself and I put it directly on the skin with the medium there. An example of this, a really good example of this, would be charcoal. So medicinal charcoal, you know, a USP grade charcoal, we use for a lot of things. And this is a great thing to be able to clean out infections with, for instance. Right, so, but if we do that, all we want to do is mix it with water. Not any of these other things, we wanted to mix it with just plain old water. 
and then we want to get that in the wound, uh, in the infection, in the tissue that we're trying to clean. But this charcoal has to come in contact. Now it's really messy, so I'm not going to open this up here for the video, but imagine charcoal is about as fine as this when it's ground, you know, that's about what the, the, uh, the size of the granules are going to be. Imagine you mix that up and, and with water and you take that and you put that directly on or in a dirty wound. And what you have to do is you have to see, in order for charcoal to work correctly, the, uh, the charcoal itself has to come in contact with the tissue it's cleaning, right? In order for it to absorb the, uh, the, 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 micro, the micro particulates that are going to be there and form, a, form a, uh, a, usually a covalent bond with those and let go of the weak hydrogen bond that it has with water, it has to touch that. It has to come in physical contact. Is it going to do that if we put that into a, to a gauze? No, it's not, right? We're not going to just drip charcoal water in. Not that we wouldn't get some charcoal in there, but we get much better use out of the charcoal if we can put it directly in contact. There are other uh, specific instances where we would want to have the actual um, herb itself in a plaster form on the skin, especially in the case of something like a sprain or a strain. That works really well. Uh, not to say that a poultice wouldn't too, but I just wanted to define those. A compress, on the other hand, is usually just um, any kind of a rag, and usually we use compresses for, for closed tissue injuries, but, but we could use them for other things, or, or on the eyes, you know, for, for tired eyes, or for even, uh, you know, infected eyes or eyelids, uh, that, you know, that's where you probably have heard of compresses being used a lot. Uh, so we can take the, er the tissue itself of some sort, some sort of a cloth, right, and we can take this and we can make a tea out of our herb, so we take the, the, the herb, put it in water, uh, whether it's a cold infusion or a hot infusion, and we take this cloth and we just soak it in the, in the water, and then we put that directly on the skin. That would be a compress. So that's pretty simple. I'm not going to demo that today because it's really not necessary. I just wanted to talk about it briefly. Um, we can also take these and, and put them into a tea uh, soak. We can soak a part of the body. We can soak you know, in sitz baths or, in, or soaking a burned finger, for instance, in an aloe bath or in some sort of or, or, you know, prickly pear. Um, we can soak our whole body in a bath. So there's a lot of other ways we can get that herb to the skin and get in the contact with the skin, but to be able to walk around in some sort of a bandaged capacity and, and have that herb working on the skin, this is, what we, this is why we would use a poultice and why poultices can be very practical. They're very useful. They're, they will also uh, absorb, absorb into the skin very well, so we end up with a better situation sometimes than we do with a salve. The salve sometimes can get dirty because it's oil-based as well, and these are going to be more water-based generally when we use them. The final thing I wanted to point out was a tincture poultice, which is sort of like a cross between a poultice and a compress, uh, in the sense that we'll take a tincture, we take the actual fluid of the tincture, and we can pour it on this, you know, on a, on a gauze, and then we can take that gauze and put that directly on a wound or whatever. And I've done that many times, do that in the field. And of course, we have the added benefit of alcohol as a disinfectant to some degree too. It's not necessarily great for the tissue itself as it's healing, but the, but the herb is. So we could take something like a chaparral tincture like this is, pour that onto uh, the, the, um, the, the gauze, put the gauze on there and then tape that on and then we have an actual tincture poultice. But th that's very, so those are very simple and self-explanatory. Let's get into a little more uh, compl complicated, not much more, but a little more complicated mechanics of doing a poultice or a plaster now. All right, let's talk now about mixing together some different um, poultices. So again, the mechanics of doing that. I went ahead, I, I kind of lied I, <laughs> earlier. I said we weren't going to do prickly pear, but let's do that because it's so simple to do. Let's just do that. So we got prickly pear here. And as you notice, I used the, the knife. This was a, the, I'd already been kind of messing around to show you guys the powder. So there was already powder on the knife. So we've already got some powder. And that's what we're going to use in here, which is ideal. Something, something nice and fine like that for the prickly pear cactus itself, that goop. Uh, we got some honey here, and then we'll do some water as well. I'm going to put the water in after I put the powder, whatever I'm putting in there. So let's just do a couple things. Let's do, uh, we'll do a powder, a dried powder. Let's do a fresh herb, and let's do, um, uh, I don't know, another, another piece of dried, or we can even mix dry, dried and fresh together. There's no reason we can't do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's start with a prickly pear then. Let's say, okay, we're going to mix a uh, prickly pear cactus. Again, I, you know, I could talk literally for two hours. And if you buy my book, I have an, you know, my, my herbal medic book, I have an entire chapter devoted to just prickly pear cactus. We Believe me, I could do a full class on prickly pear for two hour video and you would still feel like there was more we could talk. I would still feel like there was more I could talk about. But let's say we're going to use it. Uh, for what we're going to use it for, and we're going to mix in some herb with that. And so a finely ground herb goes really well with the prickly pear. So we can do this and mix it in. And there's uh, the one rule that I will say we want to try to follow when we're mixing up 
any kind of poultice, whatever it is, is, uh, you know, it's kind of a two-part rule. Now, this is actually, what I'm going to do with this is really a plaster. I keep saying poultice for this, but it's really going to be a plaster. I want to put this directly on the skin, okay? And there's a number of reasons I would do that to include why I would use prickly pear in the first place. Things like burns, things like uh, abscesses and trying to pull out uh, stuff, things like even infection where we want to do, it has prickly pear serves a similar function that charcoal does in terms of being both a flocculant and also adsorbing uh, uh, th you know, particulate. So uh, if that were the case, if we were doing it for that, we wouldn't be mixing in other particulate. But if it were, say, a burn, you know, this would be a great thing to do for a burn. Uh, so now we're taking this and mixing it on. So this is really a plaster. We'll take that and apply that to the skin. I'll show that in a minute. I'll show that actually on the person. We'll do that. Okay, uh, so that would be the case. The rule that I was talking about that we want to try to adhere to is that we try to be really generous with the square um, centimeter or square inches or whatever the square uh, area is, the, the surface area is, of whatever we're putting a poultice on. In other words, if we have a poultice that's, let's say, you know, um, it's a... Uh, uh, one square centimeter, right? So one square centimeter. We want to make sure we cover all around that. So, you know, an inch or more on each side if we could, you know, or, or a couple of centimeters on each side of all around it. So the more generous we are, the more effective our poultice will generally be. So we wouldn't take this, in other words, we wouldn't make all this if we were doing it for, say, a small wound and then just take this much, just enough to barely cover the wound that we were using. We would put it all over and then some. Okay, so be very generous with your amounts and with the, with the surface area you're covering. Uh, here's another one, is honey. Well, what could we put in honey? Well, any number of things. We could do dried, we could do fresh, right? So let's just do, we've already got some chopped up. Let me just throw some fresh in this, you know? So we've got some fresh yarrow with honey. Honey is excellent for wounds, of course. And this is, again, this is, we could do a two hour class on just honey and we'd still not cover everything that we can do with honey. So this isn't a class about uh, what we're going to use and why specifically on a medicinal level this is a class about the mechanics of making that sorry if I keep repeating myself there but I just want to I want to stress in case you feel like well well what we didn't even talk about why you'd use this well I will at another time I'm gonna use the back of the spoon here just to kind of keep it clean for for the purpose of the camera I would normally obviously use either another, another mixing uh, material or clean this off but I just wanted to show you so we were just looking at nothing but yarrow fresh yarrow and honey this would work absolutely fine to put onto a wound just like this. This is a great, this is a great little healing uh, plaster here. So this is a honey plaster. So would we use this as a poultice? When I defined a poultice, remember, I said we put it, put a material in between there. Not really. We could, but remember what we want with the poultice is we want to drip like a tea bag for, through here, and we don't have enough water content. We might here, you know, we do have a lot of water content here. And, and I didn't really even get all of the water content out when I made this. It was just kind of a fast version of it. Uh, but we might have enough here to make a poultice with and have a drip of water through there. But really, if we want to do a poultice, my favorite is really to use something that is um, uh, much, you know, like water or maybe even possibly vinegar, honey, uh, apple cider vinegar, possibly. Okay. All right. So we've got, uh, we've got... Um, uh, honey plaster, we've got a prickly pear plaster or poultice. Uh, let's go ahead and use water now and, and actually mix up something else. So we could do, again, we could do fresh, we could do dried. Let's do a little of both this time. So we've got, uh, again, uh, a bowl here that we're going to put in. Let's put in a little bit of the cut and sifted, okay, for the dried, right? And let's put in um, a little bit of a fresh herb. Let's just chalk up, chop up a little bit. Uh, this is just kind of more convenient for me to do closer to my body for the film. Let's go ahead and chop up some of this oregano here. And we'll mix the fresh with the dried. Uh, even got some yarrow in there. Let's go ahead and, and uh, just crush a few of these juniper berries and throw a couple of them in. Okay. Now we're, we're uh, every one of these herbs that we're using, this is actually nettles leaf and it's not uh, dried nettles leaf, which I normally don't really use much anyway. Uh, dried, I usually use my nettles leaf fresh. So, um, so it's just kind of extra herb. I wouldn't normally use that on, a, on, a, on the same things I would be using the yarrow or the oregano or the juniper for anyway. But it's just to kind of show you a cut and sifted leaf. Okay, so just the purpose of demonstration. So now, excuse me, um, let me go ahead and mix in a little bit of water. And let's mix that around and see. When we're done, we want this to be uh, drippy enough to be able to drip through the uh, four by four. Now this is kind of a slow work way to do this in the field really fast. What I would do, honestly, I'll show you what I do in the field. I just take, take the herb, whatever I'm going to use for the herb. Might it be this? It might be the powder, whatever it's going to be. I take that 
I take this, I pour this over the top. Let me get a little water around here and that's fine. Make sure everything's all nice and wet as much as possible. Get it soaked through all the way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let this drip back in the bowl. Okay, this is again, this is just field application of a poultice. Gets this thing soaked through so it's dripping through into my hand. I can feel it. I've got the, I've got that. And I take this and I just, bam, I'm going to slap that onto whatever it is I'm going to use. Okay, that's a field application of that. Right, so you don't, so uh, again, a poultice, we're not having a direct contact between the skin and the, and the herb itself. We're going to we're going to close it off. So, but let's go ahead and do it kind of the neat and organized and, and uh, you know more more uh, a slower way where we just mix up the herb and the water together. And we could even do that and let it sit for a little while as sort of a cold infusion. We could make a hot. We could use hot water here and pour it in, and we would get a very good effect from that from the hot from the heat itself on there. Poultices can be hot. They can be cold. Uh, we can use heat as a way of drawing infection out. We can use heat as a way to be able to open up and dilate the peripheral blood vessels for things like sprains and strains. Uh, so, so, uh, the, you know, so, so we can add temperature into the mix as well here. Okay, and then we can just let this soak if we wanted to, like this. I'm going to add a few more. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker than that, though. I'm going to put in a little bit more. Let's put in a little more dried, cut and sifted herb here. Okay, and we'll just let that sit and turn into kind of a really wet gummy poultice mix and it's going to be a little messy when we're done we're going to put this on this onto a uh, a four by four uh, or or whatever we're going to use and i'm going to actually put it onto uh, a demonstrator's uh, skin so we can see see it in action okay so here water and here's our poultice mix and it's nice and wet it's wet enough that we're going to get a drip off of that even after all of this dried herb soaks soaks up the uh, the water okay so next let's go ahead and talk about applying the uh, both a we'll actually do both we'll do a, a, um, a plaster uh, one of these two and we'll do a, we'll apply and we'll do a poultice okay so now we're at the point that we want to actually apply a poultice or a plaster okay and so remember we said we had we have a couple of plasters here one of them to review one of them is our prickly pear mix of both the prickly pear and again a ground herb one of them is a honey honey mix with um, honey and uh, you know raw honey preferably of course and our um, fresh herb which in this case was yarrow and then another one was the uh, the water mix which is our really our good what we want mainly for our poultice okay so let's go ahead and we'll just do a quick uh, plaster since that's real easy uh, first and then we'll go ahead and do a poultice okay so for a plaster we're gonna we're, the reason we do a plaster is to put it directly on the skin again the reasons for this would be uh, maybe a minor burn or even a, even a major burn I've done this for even full thickness burns the specific formulas we would use for that it would be possibly uh, in the case of charcoal it would be for infection uh, sometimes with other herbs for infection as well it would be uh, maybe for to make sure we have good contact between the skin and the herb for something like a, a sprain strain a joint that was injured uh, maybe a um, uh, maybe a, um, a, a fracture even you know bone involvement uh, any of those would be reasons we'd put a plaster directly on the skin so we have interface between the skin and, and the and the uh, herb itself okay so to do that again we would take our our herb and we would we basically put that on so let's go ahead I'm going to use the prickly pear since it's uh, not quite as messy just for the demo uh, we'll go ahead and take the prickly pear poultice and uh, now this is kind of dried out just from letting it sit out there so normally what I do with this is I mix it fresh and while it's still wet and dripping and nice and there's all kinds of water there is when I would put that on I'm just going to go ahead and use that tattoo it's kind of my target point there so this is where we put the plaster directly on the skin okay and then the next thing is what we're going to do with it well we're going to wrap it now the only now the reason we would wrap and use a um, gauze pad on this or it could be even a uh, you know a gauze pad that's got the the non uh, non drip the non the, the soak through is just to keep things uh, neater so that we don't get a whole bunch of water dripping through and uh, onto clothing or, or other places that we don't want it okay uh, the material itself put it directly on the skin and the reason that we're going to use a gauze or something else is just to keep again for neatness primarily to keep it from dripping all over the place so Notice the, the contact between the skin and the, the tissue and the, the um, uh, herb itself directly. Put something over the top of that uh, just to keep it from, from being too much of a mess. And then we can go ahead and wrap. We can wrap a number of ways. We could, if we needed to, we could use tape. 
right? I prefer generally, if I can, to use some sort of an elastic gauze. Uh, the nice thing about the ace wrap, of course, is that we can take that and we can, uh, and then we can wash it. This is way large for what we need here. We don't need this much gauze. Two inch gauze would be fine, or a shorter version. We could even cut, cut this down if we needed to, but we're basically going to wrap and make sure that, we're, of course, we're not cutting off circulation, taking care of all of that. We always usually wrap, wrap distal to proximal, no matter what, whenever we're using an ace wrap, so we don't have uh, you know, kind of venous pooling or, or push down too tight. But that's basically it. So we'll wrap that and, uh, and let that sit, and when we're ready to take it off and check it out, we'll just you know, unwrap the way we would normally do, and then we can pull, usually pull the whole thing, it'll kind of come off as one, one bunch a lot of times, and then we can you know, inspect and see what's going on with what we've wrapped. Uh, the, the thing I should mention here is with most poultices, we want to make sure that we are uh, inspecting and taking a look at a close look at whatever it is we're looking at on a very regular basis and on a, on a pretty uh, 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 frequent basis as well. If, for instance, you know, this depends on how critical it is, but if we're looking at an infection in the field, for instance, and we're doing maybe a charcoal uh, poultices, uh, I, I literally am rinsing that thing off. If it's a bad enough infection, I'll rinse that thing off every 45 minutes to an hour and put on new charcoal and just and inspect the tissue state and see, is it getting better? Do we have, uh, are we closer to, you know, the, the tissue, the redness going away? Or maybe even I've, seen, I've done this with lymphangitis where we actually have, you know, streaking up the arm. All of these things are things that we're going to watch for, okay? So the more frequent, uh, you know, to, within limits, the, the more frequent, or the, I'm sorry, the more severe the injury, the more frequent we're going to observe that. With something like maybe a you know, minor sprain or strain we're putting something on, it, it, it's good for you know, 12 hours, maybe even as long as 24 hours. I wouldn't normally leave any poultice on long, that long, especially if we've got a lot of fluid there, then we're going to get the tissue gets really wet, you know, the skin gets really wet, uh, and, and too wet, it gets, gets uh, you know, kind, of, kind of boggy, like if you put your hand in a, you know, in a bathtub too long, you know, that type of thing. We don't want that either. We want to take, pay attention to tissue state. So uh, 12 hours is about the limit that I normally use for any kind of a poultice, and even usually shorter than that, more like six to eight hours before I check it. But most, far, most common, or most frequent, 30 to 60 minutes if I needed to, every, that I'd be repulticing re this. So as you can see, it's not as convenient as putting on, you know, as taking pharmaceuticals, it never is with herbs. All right, so that was our, our plaster. Let's do a poultice now, and for the poultice, again, we're going to use water itself because that was what we're doing. We're dripping that water into the actual um, uh, injury. Now, I had two three-by-threes, so I thought, here. Oh, here's the other. Well, there we go. That's fine. So we've got another three-by-three three here. Now, for a poultice, really, uh, like this, if I wanted to, to get a lot of surface area, I'd probably use um, more than this. I'd probably use one on the bottom, put my poultice on there, and put one on the top. So I could certainly do that. Uh, I've used up my, my, my two three by threes that I had here, and that's fine. We can also uh, do it this way. We can take something and we can put it in there, and then we can close it around on top. Okay, so this is the poultice again. So here we're using the water-based poultice, and we want to have this between this and the skin so that we get that tea bag kind of effect to where it's just really dripping the, uh, the water through into and onto the wound or the injury itself. Okay, so you see how that's starting to do that already? We've got all that drippage coming down there. That's what we want there. And then what we can do, and remember I said be ge very generous with the area. This is enough for a really small area. Normally if I was, if this was like say the elbow joint or the wrist joint or something, uh, you know, even this size, if there's an injury that covered this size, I would, I would go all the way around here and I would make sure by an inch or two on either side of it, all the way around in a radius that I was covering that area. Okay, so be generous with your area, your surface area. Okay, so then we can just close this over the top. Like so, okay, and then we're back to the same thing. We'll go ahead and wrap this, and again, it's going to be a little messy. It's going to be on the messy side. We can put, you can put plastic uh, type, you know, uh, basically non-drip uh, uh, pads on top of that of various, you know, various types, medical or, or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, we really want to try to, I don't like doing that. I like to let air into this, too. I think that it's important, as long as we keep it clean and keep something on top of it, uh, I think it's important for air to get to that tissue as well and not to just cut off uh, uh, oxygen, not to have an occlusive dressing for something like this. That's not healthy. And you'll see, there, it's not. I mean, if you do this, you'll see that it just doesn't, it's not, doesn't promote healing. So then we can just go ahead and wrap this again with our ace wrap. And I'm just partial to ace wraps, and especially with a poultice like this where it's all wet, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and wrap it fairly generously. We're very, I'm, not, I'm not pulling tight on this at all. This is just, and this isn't real blood, by the way. This is fake blood. This is a, this is a training 
uh, uh, supplies that we use and we sometimes you know have moulage and, and, and fake blood so don't think that I'm using uh, something that's that dirty. The nice thing about ace wraps you know for, for this is that we can of course put it onto a um, you know we can use uh, paper clips or we can just literally tuck it underneath itself if we want to just for you know as long as they're not doing you no know, really active anything really active we could do something like that for sitting around and then that way we can go back and check it out in a couple of hours where they've been resting it and then we can uh, remove the poultice and look at the injury itself reinspect very very important it's very important that you stay on top of this you don't just dress it and then walk away from it and think it's going to be good by itself you have to come back and reinspect we clean this off and reinspect it for inflammation you know basically uh, you know the original stuff that you learn in, in emergency medicine or if you're in our courses you, that you learn just you know mnemonics like like DOTS right deformities open wounds, tenderness, swelling. So we're back there looking for any signs of inflammation. We're, we're observing uh, for the original inf infection and where that, where the, what the state of that is at that point. Okay, so that has been the, uh, the uh, video here on the mechanics of applying a poultice, the mechanics of applying a, a plaster, and then we talked through just a little bit about a compress as well. And, and you know, the compress, again, is a real kind of a, a no-brainer. That's just a, you know, the, it's sort of like, uh, it's, it's just basically the version of a poultice without any of the herb in it because we're just dipping it in water, a, a water solution, a tea first, and then putting it on. Okay? And we talk through all the different solutions we can use. We talk through the different forms of herbs that we can use for this and how we you know, macerate them. And uh, I think we covered most of it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, there will be more to come. We'll talk more about the specific herbs we would use and why we would use them for wound healing, for tissue healing, for broken bones. All the things that we would use herbs for. We'll get into that in a later video in another video. Thanks. Bye.